And I want to just take a moment to explain to our viewers what really is going on. So here is the case that the southern Indian states are trying to build against the center. We'll get into the financial logic, but I'll try and explain what is it that they're cribbing and carping about. So I'll first take a look at how much of every rupee that each of these states uh, generates through various uh, manufacturing, taxation, all the various ways in which revenue is generated in the states, how much of it comes back from the center. That's the first uh, chart. Pay attention because there's a lot of intricate detailing involved and then we'll get into the politics of this. So in a state like Karnataka, of every rupee that is sent to the center, 15 paise comes back, just 15 paise comes back to a state like Karnataka, which is why Karnataka is claiming to be upset. In a state like Bihar, um, of every uh, rupee that they send, they get 7 rupees back. So they're sending much lesser to the center, getting much more from the center. That's as far as Bihar is concerned. For a state like Tamil Nadu, remember, uh, the Stalin government will also be joining the protest. For every rupee that uh, they send, for every rupee they contribute to central finances, uh, Tamil Nadu gets 0.29 paise back. So 0.29 paise you get back, that's only 30 paise out of 100, right? Whereas a state like UP, for every rupee UP sends to the center, they get 2.73 rupees back. So they're giving lesser, getting more. Uh, and the same is the case with states like Telangana, Andhra Pradesh, Kerala, getting much lesser than they contribute. Whereas other states like Rajasthan, get 1.33 back. So they give 1 rupee, they get 1.33 back. Bihar gets 7 rupees back. Karnataka gets only 15 paise back. That's the nub of the problem. So how is it that it is determined? Who gets how much money? That's the second chart that you see. Now this is a very intricate formula. It's called the devolution formula worked out by the 15th Finance Commission. Without getting too dense, I just want to give you a sense of how this operates. So this is based on the composition of each state across different criteria. So 15% of the weightage in the determination of who gets how much money is based on the actual population of the state. So the more populated you are, the more in the algorithm uh, that determines how much money goes to which state you stand to gain because you've got a bigger population, so you need more money. 15% um, is area, so obviously bigger states need more money, get more money, so 15% of the formula is area. Forest and ecology, how much of the state is populated with the forest area? That's 10%. Equity is 45%. Equity means, and this is the biggest category, like 45% of the determination happens on the basis of equity. Equity is income distance. So basically, in that state, how far are people in that state from the state with the highest income? So how far are people in a particular state from the richest state? That is 45%, which is why you saw states that are poor, like a Bihar or Uttar Pradesh, get much more money from the center than the richer states. So then tax and fiscal effort. So how fiscally prudent are you? How much tax are you mopping up? That is also given weightage, but that's much lesser, just 2.5%. Demographic performance is 12.5%. This has been added after pressure from the southern states. Demographic performance means to what extent have you been able to control the speed at which your population is growing? That gets 12.5%. But the reason that the poorer states get more money is largely because equity is 45% of the weightage, which means how far are people, how far is that state from the richest state gets half the weightage, which is why the poorer states get the most amount of money. I want to show you two more charts before we get into this conversation. So here you see how the contribution um, in the overall central pie for some of the South Indian states is coming down. So in the 10th Finance Commission, Karnataka had 5.34% contribution out of all the money that was being sent, 5.34% was coming to Karnataka. In the 11th Finance Commission, it came down, 12th Finance Commission came down further, 13th it came down further. By the time of the 15th Finance Commission, it came down to 3.65s out of every 100 rupees that are getting distributed at this moment, Karnataka is getting only 3.65 rupees. In the 10th Finance Commission, they got 5.34. This doesn't look like a big amount right now, but just imagine when it's thousands of crores, every decimal makes a big difference. 
Kerala used to get 3.88% of every 100 rupees in the 10th Finance Commission. That's now come down to 1.93. So big drop in the case of Kerala as well. Uh, whereas in the case of a Tamil Nadu, for example, from 6.64, the amount of money that Tamil Nadu is getting out of every 100 rupees that the center is spending is now only 4.08. Whereas other states, like take for example in Uttar Pradesh, and I've got that here as an example, Uttar Pradesh is kind of where it was. 17% earlier, 17.94% uh, now. So 17.81 in the 10th Finance Commission went up to almost 20% in the 11th Finance Commission and is still about 18% in the 15th Finance Commission. So while the South Indian states are getting more money, but that's also because the economy is going to naturally will get more money. But when you look at the percentage that they're getting out of every 100 rupees that the center is spending, the South Indian states are complaining that the amount of money that they're getting as a percentage is actually coming down. That's at the nub of the problem. So with all this uh, said and done, I now want to kickstart this conversation. Hopefully you have a better sense of the issues at play. Tejasvi Surya, you come from Karnataka and I just showed and I'll have that out on our screen again, the data for Karnataka which shows that Karnataka's state of uh, share of states in taxes has come down from 5.34% in the 10th Finance Commission to 3.65% now. And your chief minister and deputy chief minister are saying this is unfair just because we are doing a better job of uh, managing our finances, managing our demography. Therefore, we are being penalized against states like Bihar, like Uttar Pradesh, which are not doing as good a job. And this is unfair to South Indian states like Karnataka. How do you respond to all that's being said and done? Tejasvi Surya. Good evening, Rahul. Um, I will take a, a couple of minutes to address this uh, uh, argument that has been put forth by the Chief Minister. It's a two-pronged uh, uh, argument that he has made. First, we must understand that the Finance Commission is a constitutional body. It's an autonomous body. And the central government nor the state governments have uh, any kind of sway over it. The Finance Commission has certain terms of reference which it arrives at and then holds extensive con consultation process all over the country and then arrives at the figures that it arrives at. So first of all, the whole attempt to politicize the whole uh, 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 argument by saying that the Narendra Modi government is not giving Karnataka its just and due um, funds is, is, is based on falsehood because the Finance Commission is a constitutional body, first thing. Second, I agree that with respect to Karnataka, one of the reasons why there is a decline in the percentage of devolution, even though there has been a consistent increase in the total quantum of money that the state has received, the reason why uh, uh, there has been a decline in the percentage that you have showed in your chart is because of the equity the 40% weightage that is given to equity. Now let's compare to 14th Finance Commission. In 14th Finance Commission, the weightage to population was 17%. In the 15th Finance Commission, it has been reduced to 15%, which is good in so far as the states which have reduced population is concerned. Second, you also made, po made the point that the 12.5% 12 12 point that is being given to demographic performance is also uh, to make this whole income distribution more equitable. Now the point about equity is where Karnataka has, uh, has to make uh, a more uh, 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 vigorous argument at least before the 16th Finance Commission because Bengaluru has the highest per capita income among all cities in the country. Whereas even districts just around Bengaluru, which is Bengaluru rural, which is um, uh, you know, uh, Chikbalapura, which is, you, you know, our Kalyana Karnataka, many of these have abysmally low per capita incomes. But the Finance Commission takes the per capita income of the state overall 
and because of uh, the uh, disproportionately high uh, per capita income of people in bengaluru the per capita income of the state of karnataka is reflected very uh, in, is, in a very if, uh, if sidaramayya uh, or dk shiv kumar were listening to this story they would this, say that this is exactly what we are saying that because bengaluru or hyderabad are so rich they pull no, karnataka no, no. and second. telangana up Uh, that, make it seem as if it's more second. equitable, but equitable uh, is not true because there's a lot of inequity in the districts. They'll say, "Hey, no, no, who hai? should? Who, no, no, one second, one second, Rahul. This argument should be made before whom? This argument should be made before the Finance Commission. And Finance Commission came to Karnataka to hold these consultations in 2019. They were here for three full days." And these, th there were six ministers who are now part of the very same Congress government today. who were ministers even then they did not make this argument at that time they should have perhaps told that the state government you should have taken per capita income based on the districts of karnataka not karnataka as a whole because bangalore has a higher per capita income this should have been made that time no how do you know it wasn't so made the maybe point it here was and maybe they can the argue because the 15 point, finance commission no, no, was ultimately Uh, something no, which no, was appointed second, Rahul. by Rahul, by the center the therefore it have... ruled against them and against the south indian states the fact is it's an emotive topic they just when they've got uh, or at least they are attempting i do not expect rahul i do not expect you to be rahul one second please i do not expect you to be making a statement similar to the congress party spokesperson the finance commission is not appointed by the central government the cent it's a constitutional body under article 280 of the constitution it's an autonomous body therefore it does not function as per the whims and fancies of the central government whichever party be in power this is the first position the second point is let me tell you the politics behind this whole thing let me take a minute to explain the politics behind this whole thing i have put an academic point on why the karnataka share has reduced with respect to the equity uh, uh, terms of reference but the politics behind this is something that is very devious which is mischievous and also illogical and dare i say also unconstitutional one right after the state government came to power they realized that it is impossible for them to foot the bills of the freebie politics that they had promised the guarantees that they had uh, they had promised they had promised 10 kgs of rice they couldn't deliver it they started blaming the center they created a false bogey that the central government is not giving them the additional 5 kg of rice when even before the state elections took place all states were barred from procuring it from the godowns and only open market procurement was the only way possible next dk shiv kumar a few months ago says that karnataka will see no development this year because they have no funds because 40000 crores has to be set on set aside for guarantees fulfilling the freebies a few weeks thereafter the economic advisor to the chief minister says we need 58000 crore of rupees to fund the freebie politics it is in this context that a state which just 7 uh, 8 months ago under bommai's leadership had given a 40000 surplus budget is now con co constructing this drama that karnataka is not getting its due this is the politics this is the context in which this argument is being done the second argument that they have done which is against spacious is this my tax my right now you showed that we the the government of india is spending from the uh, tax uh, that is collected from the revenue that is generated a large portion goes to bihar a large portion goes to some other states where per capita income and the developmental indices are much much uh, behind the same argument if you extend to karnataka bengaluru contributes 55% of the state's revenue should i as member of parliament of bengaluru going by the very same my tax my right logic should i demand that all the revenue that is collected in bengaluru must stay and it must be utilized only for bengaluru and not to other aspirational districts of karnataka like raichur kalburgi kalyan karnataka like bijapura is this an argument that can also be taken ahead and if you extend this another uh, 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 you know uh, much further at the level of individuals can tax payers who are paying the highest tax lap 30% slab big industrialists who are paying large amount of taxes can they say we must get but uh, benefits proportionate to that can you run a country like this so this whole argument that my tax my right and that we need a separate southern nation is devious it is unconstitutional 
because it is against the principles of cooperative federalism. Okay, so here is the point. What you are saying the, is, what you are saying is logical. Ultimately, taxes taken from the rich the to help the poor. The, but the fact also is, they just that, that at this time in, that are in Rahul, one second. Yes. At this time, the opposition Sorry, has ahead, no ahead. issue, right? They've been uh, floundering around. The India Alliance is. You know, just capitulating, they've got nothing. They found what they think is one issue. Here, they're trying to show that we are paying more taxes, we are getting much lesser, and they're trying to build an emotional spin out of it. So that's the challenge. And you come from, uh, you know, Bengaluru. The argument no, you no, made no, no, also no, makes second. the point that they should get more because it's, it's not right. Bangalore contributes more. Several of the districts in Karnataka are very poor. And therefore, they're trying to capitalize on that emotion to try and stitch some kind of a campaign, that's the challenge the BJP faces now, Tejasvi. Well, Rahul, the people of the country understand and see through this devious politics of the Congress party. I can assure you that the majority, the responsibility that the country's common voter, the armed voter has towards the country is far, far higher than the average Congress party worker. So they see through this politics of division. And it's not that the uh, uh, states which were doing well are not taking uh, a, a larger uh, share of the uh, tax burden. This is not that uh, it has started only under the Modi government. This was something, it was a practice that was there under the Manmohan Singh government. It was the practice that was there uh, earlier when Nehru was the prime minister, when Indira Gandhi was the prime minister, when Rajiv Gandhi was the prime minister. Because ever since the... Uh, 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 enactment of the constitution, the principles of devolution are pretty much the same. So it's not that uh, this whole devolution, the, uh, the principles of devolution was uh, devised by the uh, Modi government just 10 years ago and that the southern states are, uh, uh, um, you know, being subject to some kind of a, uh, injustice just in the last 10 years. And, and if Maharashtra, which pays a higher tax than Karnataka, is not making this argument, if Delhi, which pays higher tax than Karnataka, is not making this argument, then you can very well understand why only the Congress party from Karnataka is making this argument. And let me also tell you, Rahul, let me take just 30 more seconds and tell you that these arguments that they are making is also not just illogical, but are also false. For example, their first argument is that the Finance Commission recommended a special grant to Karnataka to the tune of 5,400 crore rupees. I went through the whole of the Finance Commission's document, which is around 500 pages long, not a single sentence in the final report of the Finance Commission recommends any special grants to any state whatsoever, leave alone Karnataka. But the Congress government today has taken out a full-page advertisement in all newspapers in the country stating this lie. Then they have said the state has not got GST compensation. The state has received 1 lakh crore of GST compensation. It is the only state in the country which has no dues from the central government insofar okay. as GST devolution is concerned. Okay. So they, we... have again, they have again made this lie in, 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 using taxpayers' money to misguide taxpayers. The third lie that they have made is that whimsically and all of a sudden the central government stopped. GST compensation after five years. You know that the GST Act mandates that compensation from GST has to be paid, the GST compensation has to be paid to states only for five years. This was a mandate of the law. Even Uttar Pradesh will, will, not, get, uh, will not get GST compensation henceforth, nor will Gujarat get. So how is there uni how is Karnataka being uniquely uh, uh, treated uh, and uh, okay. uh, 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 exceptionally you know uh, uh, just injustice is being meted out? Then the other point that they have made today is that they have asked for drought relief and Karnataka has got zero. They have actually said this. They have said Karnataka has got zero rupees under the Finance Commission devolution itself. Twelve thousand rupees is earmarked as funds for drought relief for disaster relief. And around 6,000 crores has already been devolved and been released to state government. And then they take out an advertisement okay. using taxpayers' money, lying to the taxpayer that we have not got any money. 
So okay. the questions that you must be asking is one, why is the Congress party making this devious, anti-national, anti-constitutional, my tax, my right kind of an argument? Second, when the Finance Commission has not made any special recommendation, why is it that they are lying through their teeth and taking out large advertisements? Three, when Karnataka has received GST compensation, there is no due from the central government with respect to GST. Why is it that they are lying again? When all states GST compensation has incurred cessation, has stopped after five years because it is mandated under the GST law, why is it that they are lying? Fifth, when the Finance Commission has already devolved 12,000 or earmarked 12,000 odd crore rupees for disaster relief, and of which 6,000 crore rupees odd has already been released to state government, why is it that they have taken out an advertisement okay. lying again that Karnataka has got zero rupees for disaster relief? Tejashwi Surya, we leave it there. Thank you for joining us and setting up this conversation.